I'm going to talk a little bit about the Maxwell stress tensor. I'm going to give you a brief motivation as to why it might be useful um, and then give a short example at the end. We know that the Lorentz force on um, a charge in a set of fields is given by F, the force is equal to Q, the charge, into E, the electric field, plus V crossed with B. Now, if we have a collection of charges in, and fields in a volume V, we can write the total force as the volume integral of rho, the charge density, into E plus V crossed with B. Um, and you'll notice that we've made something of an assumption here in that we've only given a single velocity. Um, <coughs> we might want to broaden that out to some other time, but, but for now that'll do. Um, and we're going to rewrite that by remembering um, that you can write this as rho E um, plus J cross B, where J is the current density. And in that point, we've now managed to kind of pick up the problem of different velocities and different charges. Um, you might want to think just a little bit carefully about how one would have to set up a current density if you had charges of different signs. But we're not going to worry about that for now. So now the question is, can we write this force um, F purely in terms of the fields. Um, you'll notice that we've been doing this um, throughout. So when we derived the pointing vector, for instance, um, we did this. And the answer is we can. Um, and we end up by thinking about not just the, the force in the volume, but also the pressure or the stress on the surface. Um, I'll do the derivation in a separate video, but I'll just say for now it can be shown that you can write the force F as a surface integral, a closed surface integral, um, of the stress tensor T, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, dot N dS, where N is the surface normal, S is the surface area, um, minus the volume integral of epsilon naught mu naught dN by dT, where N is the pointing vector, um, n is equal to E cross, um, excuse me, h. Um, and this, this first integral can, if you want to, also be written as a volume integral of the divergence of that stress tensor T, um, which allows you to think about this in terms of conservation laws, but we're not going to do that for now. Now, the Maxwell stress tensor, um, T, uh, it's written as a matrix. It's got, it's got nine components, um, one for each of the three different directions. Um, and it's defined as follows. It's equal to epsilon naught into EI EJ minus a half delta IJ E squared, and then plus an equivalent for the magnetic field, one over mu naught into BI BJ minus a half delta IJ B squared, um, and delta ij is just the Kronecker delta. It's equal to 1 if i is equal to j, and it's equal to 0 if i is not equal to j. Now, stress is something that is extremely interesting, it's, it's extremely important, um, but it's maybe a little bit more complicated mathematically. Um, so let me just indicate briefly that you can write the stress um, on a surface with normal um, n, so the vector n defines the surface because it's normal to the surface, then the stress on that surface, which is a vector, but I'm going to put a little n as, as a subscript to indicate that that's the, the stress along the direction of n, is given by t, the tensor, which in this case is a matrix, acting on the vector n. We're writing it as a dot product. If you prefer, you can write that as s n i is equal to a sum over j of t i j n j. So this is just simple matrix vector um, acting. But the consequence of this is that if you think about um, a system where you've got something providing a stress in one direction, you can get stresses in other directions. The, the classic example I've often used in lectures is thinking about taking a block of foam um, and squeezing it, say, along the z-direction. Um, and what you see when you squeeze along the z-direction is, of course, that it expands along x and y. So that's an example of the, the fact that a force applied along one direction can lead to a stress in a different direction. So let's just think about um, a plane wave um, and think about what the, what the, the stress that would, that would give. Um, 
So let's consider a plane wave, and we're going to be traveling along Z. Um, sorry, that's not a very good Z. Um, so you could write K is equal to K in the Z direction. Um, we'll put E along the Y direction. Hang on, um, let me get this right. So if K, no, I'm going to put E along X, that's what I meant, which means that B is along Y, um, which gives us a right-handed set because K cross E is equal to B um, and Z cross X is equal to Y. So that's all fine. Um, in this case, the, tens the stress tensor T um, is diagonal. And we can write the components as follows. We have TZZ um, is minus a half epsilon naught E squared minus a half one over mu naught B squared. Uh, and TXX is equal to TYY is equal to a half epsilon naught E squared plus a half one over mu naught B squared. So you see that we have, um, we will have components of stress along all three different directions, even though the plane wave itself is only traveling along Z. Let's take two simple um, examples. So first of all, let's consider a surface where the normal N is equal to 0, 0, minus 1. Um, in that case, if we've got the, the Z direction like this, um, our surface is going to be here with a normal pointing in that direction. In that case, um, the stress on that surface can be written um, purely along the z direction, actually. So that's 0, 0, um, whoopsie, I keep triggering the arrays, um, a half epsilon naught e squared plus a, a half 1 over mu naught b squared. Um, so that's maybe not quite so interesting. What about um, a situation where, let's say, n is equal to 1, 1, 1? Well, in that case, the stress is written as follows. Um, I'm going to take the, the prefactor outside, so we've got a half epsilon naught e squared plus a half 1 over mu naught b squared in brackets, and then that's going to act on the vector 1, 1, minus 1. So here we have an example where you've got a plane wave traveling along the z direction, um, and the stress on a surface along the 1, 1, 1 direction would be have components along x, y, and z. Um, you can do a great deal more with the Maxwell stress tensor. Um, you can help to conserve momentum by thinking about the balance between the momentum in the fields as well as the, the stress. Um, and this becomes important if you're thinking about radiation pressure. Um, but that's what I'm going to cover for now.